Welcome to Beyond Vows and Veils, your luxury wedding experience. Our podcast, I feel, is a treasure trove of inspiration and insight for newly engaged couples. Join us as we have captivating stories, expert insight, and real wedding experiences that you can listen and learn from. Hi, couples and industry pros. Please join me in welcoming our esteemed guest speaker, DJ Raj Manocha. He is the visionary owner of Platinum Roadshow, formerly known as DJ Sunny Entertainment. DJ Raj Manocha has over two decades of experience in the industry. And what started as something that he was collaborating with his brother in the basement of his parents' house, where then he supported with birthday parties to now orchestrating spectacular destination worldwide, he has had the pleasure of working at some incredible properties like the Breakers, the Plaza, and Montage in Malibu. Throughout his career, DJ Raj Manocha has collaborated with award-winning singers such as Neo, Jazzy B, Jay Sean, to name a few, and he continues to electrify clubs across New York City. What became or started as a two-man operation has blossomed into a dynamic team of nine, which is required to execute the unparalleled experiences that DJ Raj Manocha is renowned for. Every event that DJ Raj leaves, he's left a mark. He ultimately is going to make sure that that dance floor is ablaze and the crowd loves keeping him lingering for hours long after the music is supposed to stop. (laughs) For DJ Raj, no event is too big or too small and each wedding and event holds a special place in his heart as it's where he gets to showcase his passion and his talents to the fullest. DJ Raj Manocha's journey is defined by persistence and an unwavering commitment to his craft and an unrelenting drive to exceed expectations. His debut mixtape, Going Platinum, which was released in 2016, catapulted him onto the global stage, which solidified his reputation as a trailblazer in the industry. Behind every successful DJ stands a solid team, and DJ Raj credits his crew for upholding his standard of excellence while infusing each event with their unique flair. With the unwavering support of his wife, the endorsements of his parents, and the guidance of his brother who founded the company, DJ Raj remains an open book to an ever-evolving industry. Please give me a warm welcome in accepting and having amazing conversation with DJ Raj Manocha as he shares his insights and experiences from a lifetime dedicated to creating unforgettable moments on the dance floor. Welcome. All right. Welcome, everyone, back to Beyond Vows and Veils. I'm Brittany, your host. I've been delinquent for a week because I was out on vacation, but we are back. We're super excited. So honestly, couples who are listening or even industry pros, buckle up because we are here with DJ Raj, who's going to talk shop about like all things entertainment and production. So we're really excited to have him. So thank you so much, Raj, for joining us. Absolutely. It's an honor. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you, Eventrix. You guys are awesome. You guys are like my family from the South. And we love it. Means it. a lot to be asked. <laughs> I mean, it was an honor when uh, you asked me. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm nervous. It's funny. We I rock out in front of these big, large audiences. But then this is like something different and unique, but I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it was so funny when you told me you're nervous. It's like you literally speak in front of a thousand people. Like it's nothing. Like you're out in the middle of the dance floor doing your thing. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> no, we're there. So we're in the rush. We're we're in the rush of the moment. Right. Uh, the job has to be. And we have a schedule, as you know, we have to follow. <laughs> right. Right. And we're very we're tedious like, about we that. We got to rock this. This is like, you're going to see me sweating, but we'll figure it out. We'll make it happen. Totally. Let's go on. Totally. Love it. So, where are you in the world today? Today, home, Jersey. Central Jersey, um, as I like to call it, um, but traveling next week, I'll be in Cancun, as you as you know, a second home for us South Asian vendors. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this time of the year in the Northeast is a little chill, time to kind of you know get ready for next season, relax, get to meet our family, and say, hey, how are you guys doing? Because I haven't seen you for a year, but home can't complain. I love it. Yeah, totally. I mean, I feel like you travel a lot. Do you enjoy when you travel for all these events? Uh, I do. Don't get me wrong. I love mm-hmm. it. I love traveling. Mm-hmm. This is an honor just to be asked to travel miles and thousands of miles to go DJ a wedding. But at the same time, it's it's 
a lot of moving parts, a lot of work, a lot of stress. I may mm-hmm. be on a flight to a wedding in Florida, but my crew is still traveling down with a truck full of equipment. So we're stressing about making sure they arrive safely. And then also the time away from family because we're traveling. Mm-hmm. That's, I've learned, is the hardest in the past two years just because my daughter's turning two in March. So it's like, oof, I had to leave for three days. I won't see her. <laughs> yeah, it's, but, it's definitely a, it's a, a love, love-hate love relationship, destination weddings. And it's got to make sense, obviously, when you go out mm-hmm. there and what have you. But, um, you know, for those of you that don't know about you, Raj, and everything that you do, maybe just give us a quick little snippet of what you and your crew do and the services you guys provide. So we're a one-stop shop, not just for, of course, you start off as DJs, but we're a production company. So DJs, MCs, lighting, video screens, dance floor printing, uh, special effects, photo booths, the whole nine yards. So anything with the word entertainment and more, we kind of provide now. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes we do overlap with other vendors and it's up to the couple what they want to do. They want to come in our direction or go different. We have no problem. Uh, but end of the day, End of the day, we're DJs. We're there to rock your crowd, rock your wedding. Um, the bells and whistles come after for me. I care about going into a wedding. My DJs and I, we just want to go in, like I said earlier, rock the crowd because that's who we are. That's how we started. That's our main bread and butter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's totally. It. And I think that makes a really big difference because obviously as planners, we kind of hear these days of you know DJs having these layered on services and add-ons but I'm totally with you I feel like one of the most important things for couples when they start exploring DJs or looking at entertainment pros is you know are you guys connecting um you know and, and I've seen you obviously firsthand so I'm biased I think you're amazing at what you do and I know that you bring your full energy into all the projects you work You know, what would be some advice that you would give to couples that are kind of in the exploration portion of trying to find who they're going to work with as their entertainment professional? Like, is there any advice or just things that maybe they should be asking? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, don't, I tell my writing, clearly they they do their research. They're advised not from their coordinators or their planners, but they're also advised through family and friends that who have gotten married in the past and used DJ. So now they got like 15 DJs or 15 production companies in their mind. They're going to do their research, go to Instagram, go to the website, read reviews. Um, and of course, think back to when you attended those weddings and saw, okay, DJs do this. I don't like that. I want to make sure my DJ does this. Do your research, get all your thoughts together. And then go to the DJ, talk to them, and see if it makes sense, the connection, the chemistry. And don't sit there and really ask your DJs, what do you play? We're open format. We're going to come in and, you know, make your end goal, make your people dance. (laughs) Right. Have a good time. We're going to make them dance. So I'm confident with that. But what to ask your DJ is how to make your, how can you make our wedding different? That's the question I love when bride and grooms ask me. And then you got my, you got my attention because I want to go into your wedding and do a different, something different than I did last week. And then last mm-hmm. week I want to do something different than I did two weeks ago. Next week I want to do something completely out of this world because if we're on our toes, us as the performers and the production company, we're going to go even above and beyond to make sure everything is as planned and even better than we'll, you know, we can provide. I'm not sure if that kind of makes sense, but we don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over and over because we're going to get bored. And if we're yeah. bored, your guests are bored. <laughs> right. No, 100%. I totally resonate with that. You know, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, ultimately, you want to provide something that's a unique experience for any couple that's going to be hiring a DJ. And, you know, I definitely feel like I relate a lot to DJs in the sense that what we sell is not a tangible product. So like at the end, I'm not going to have like this picture to give you, or I don't, I'm not going to set up this like, you know, floral structure. So it's difficult Mm -hmm. because you don't really see the full value of what we bring until it's day of, right. Until you're there, you're experiencing it and you're able to have it. And that's why I think like reviews or testimonials from previous clients that have obviously worked from you, because there's only so much you can get from like photos and videos. Cause I have a lot of couples that will even ask me like, so like, can he send us some like playlists or like what? And I'm just like, you know, I, I don't what's know a, if that's going to really a, support. Yeah. What's the playlist we're going to do? Tell you the right. same 20 songs that every DJ is going to play. Every DJ is good. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of 
are other DJs and other companies and DJs all around the globe that are super talented. I, I can confidently say that. I have no doubt. But what's a 10-song playlist going to tell you that, yeah, he knows the 10 songs that I play at every single wedding? Um, it's just mm-hmm. how, once again, how can you make my wedding different? And like you said, right. uh, we can't draw a picture because decorators can. They can give you a mood board. Um, the whole nine yards, we can just tell you and just look at our past experience and see what we've done in the past and just paint you a picture and at the end of the party, you're yeah. like, oh, wow, you did make yeah. my wedding <laughs> yeah. better than I 100%. imagined. 100%. You know, I feel like also, you know, after you kind of choose who you're going to work with as your DJ, you know, how often or when do you feel like is an appropriate time to connect with couples to kind of talk about, all right, like, what's your vibe and tone for your welcome party? Or, you know, what are we looking? Are we bringing any live entertainers in for ceremony? Or like, when is that conversation even need to happen? What what do you consider? Is it too premature to be talking about that in the beginning? Or should you be connecting intermixed in between? It's funny you asked that. I just answered a bride and groom yesterday. They just, they finalized us for a wedding in September. And like, when can we start discussing music with our DJ? And I was like, you can start talking tomorrow, but it's way too early, way too early. Mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. say about maybe four months before is your first time you want to, not first time, but you want to start getting the conversation started, chat with the DJ, hang out with the DJ. I'm not saying go to the mall and go to lunch, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> just calls like this, just hang out, talk on the phone and, just by chatting us as DJs, whether it's me or someone from our company, we're really good at reading our bride and groom reading our crowd. And that's what we do. We read the room. Mm-hmm. And just by talking to a couple for 10 minutes, we can tell, okay, they graduated this time. They, um, from undergrad, we know what generation they're from. Just by talking to them, they can tell us some things and we'll be like, okay, this is a more of a hip hop couple. You know what? They're EDM head because they went to a David Guetta concert last year. I don't know. I'm just making up things here. But um, I want to say four months before you want to kind of get things started mm-hmm. and then gradually maybe have another one or two calls, Zoom calls like this or meetings at our office. But the mm-hmm. final call should be like about two weeks before. And okay. I know it's a little close, but two weeks before I think is enough time for everything to be fresh in a DJ's mind too. Because mm-hmm. we're rocking weddings starting, you know, on a, not just starting, but on a weekly basis. And we don't want to get our bride and grooms mixed up. And of yeah, course we 100%. have schedules. Yeah, so yeah. I say two weeks I mean, before is a good time to finalize everything. Yeah, I mean, you guys are traveling all over the place. You obviously have a big team and things of that. And, you know, curious when it comes to, like, just I'm curious. When it comes to song submissions, you know, like when you have couples that will send over, like, these are all the songs I want played or whatever. Like, how much is too much? Like, at what point are you sort of, like, playing DJ? I don't mind. And we don't – actually, we don't mind getting too many songs because – I'm very confident half the songs on that list are probably already in the back of our minds. We already know mm-hmm. they're going to want to hear Sadi Gali, Kala Chashma. Like, we know that you know those songs. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I think having too many do not play songs is, uh, there should be a oh. cap on that. Okay. Um, That's actually really interesting. I, yeah. Playlists, give us 100 songs, 200 songs, no problem. We're probably going to play them anyways. Uh, the do not right. play is very crazy because we had a few weddings this past year that or last year gave us like about 200 do not play songs i was like oh, wow, wow you guys that that's a lot i seen 10 maybe 15 which is a reasonable number but this was like every song you can imagine that you Brittany, would dance to at a party or a club or a wedding or whatever in your car then you're like wait how do i not play these songs <laughs> that is and I get wild it. i've actually <laughs> Yeah, it's That's their wild. big day. We're we're there to do what we're asked to do. But I thought 200 was a bit much. Yeah, I definitely agree <laughs> in personalization and wanting to create this experience and wanting it to be very different. But I can see how you also don't want to have these, like, limitations and things like yeah. that. Because ultimately, you know, that's not going to give you the experience some, you're really looking for. Something the couple may not like, which is understandable, but... Those are some things that the crowd will definitely want to hear. And that's mm-hmm. the songs that sometimes we need to get the crowd on the floor. Because some we don't get, we can't, we don't choose our audience, obviously. So some weddings right. will have this amazing crowd whose hands are up in the air. And it was like, wow, they were just came to party. Then some crowds, we kind of got to go out of our way, which is part of our job and our experience to make them dance. But we got to rely on somebody's crowd favorite song that we know 
when when an uncle hears that, he'd be like, "Bam, I'm coming on the floor, no matter what time of the day it is." Or we're during dinner set, we play a song. We'll see uncles come up, and we love it because the bride and groom are gonna be like, "Oh wow, they're dancing, cool." That that, and then right, that's like, their okay. mission accomplished. Yeah, and then yeah. that's for us. Is like, whatever we're doing, we're doing right. Keep doing it. Yeah, one hundred percent. No, I I totally love that because I think reading the crowd is is really a talent. Because I'm with you. I've had couples sometimes that we've had like welcome parties, but it's not like a sangeet, but it's just a welcome party. And they're like, we just want mix and mingle. You know, we don't want people really dancing this night. And I'm like, but if you bring in a good DJ, like you can't, you don't know who your crowd's going to be. And so like, you can't, you're not going to like stop people they're having a good time. But like, if you have a good DJ, you know, you're going to have such a different dance party vibe than you are night one as opposed to night two. And, and I'm mm-hmm. totally with you. You got to let the That's professionals sort of read the room, you know? That's my favorite, though, whenever we get these welcome parties or Mandy parties, we're like, no, we just want a laid back lounge and people can mingle and drink. But then all of a sudden, an hour later, it's a rage. It's a rager. And yeah. everyone's dancing. The bride and are in the middle of being picked up in a mosh pit or something. That's I'm like, yes, this is awesome. Even though they didn't yeah. want this. Yet people are having more fun than they could ever imagine. And that's like yeah. job well done, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to come up to you and say, you know, gosh, Raj, Tone you know, all of our people had so much fun. You know, you need to <laughs> chill this out. Right? <laughs> no, that's so true. Nah. Um, you know, as far as like a couple other like things that just come to mind is, you know, when couples come to you with mixes, because you know, the Sangi performances, you know, everybody's got their mixes. Do you mix music? Or is that something that like couples usually should take care of? Or like, what's your opinion on that? So this is a, a conversation I have at least once a week with a couple. and Totally. I'm going to put it out there. So we're more than happy to make mixes one complimentary. I got you on that. Mm-hmm. This is what happens is sometimes, as you know, Indian weddings, we have like 10, 15 performances. Okay, maybe not 10, 15, maybe five, seven. Sure. <laughs> uh, it's tough for us to make all those performances, especially in the midst of the wedding season. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not that we don't want to make it. It's just tough for us to And What it is, it's the revisions. Hey, can you fix mm-hmm. this? Can you fix that? And literally, it's Friday and we have another wedding to kind of cover that weekend and they need the mix done by Sunday because they have choreo with the, with the mm-hmm. family. So mm-hmm. over the years, I stumbled upon a few links that I share with my couples that they can make a mix themselves in like five minutes. Clearly it's not going to be DJ perfect, but it's good enough for a Sangeet that you can't tell to at least an untrained ear. <laughs> right. Um, it's Right. We do provide um, services like, you know, for additional charge, nothing too crazy, just for the DJ's time. Um, one of the DJs in the company will make the extra more than one mix for you guys just to cover his time. And I, we have to because or else we'll be there just making mixes on mixes for days. Right. And it's tough. Right. Yeah, especially but, with, you know, with any DJ that's traveling. I mean, you're usually traveling on a Thursday. You're working all day Friday setting gear up, getting things programmed and ready for lighting. You're DJing till, I don't know, like t- let's say 10 or 11, we'll be conservative for night one. <laughs> and then you're usually like striking, resetting, getting ready for morning barat ceremony reception. So it is nonstop. And so I'm with you yeah. on the mixes because sometimes we do get a lot of last minute like edits or requests or this got changed. And so that makes a lot of sense. So I it's just wanted to know how to like- parts. Yeah. 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 And I actually have um, some people who have reached out to me, some DJs, like some junior, junior, beginner, uh, freshman DJs, as I call them, who reached out and say, yo, Raj, if you ever need mixes made, send your brides over my way. Nothing, nothing to take them from you guys, but we'll make the mixes. Mm-hmm. And obviously for a small fee and for them, it's practice and just kind of gain, you know, something. I I have sent them some mixes because when they, some bride and have like 15 minute long skits, with voiceovers and this and that, right. it's kind of tough to do that for me. Especially, like you said, me traveling and whatnot. But once again, one complimentary mix, I got you. Yeah, you got to rely on your team <laughs> and your community sometimes to just make sure that you're like putting your best foot forward. Yeah. Um, in terms of like community, team, you know, you've got a pretty big team now. So, like, how many yes. DJs do you have now? Oh, we have over eight. I want to say yeah. we're at maybe, actually not maybe, I know, nine DJs uh, full-time, ready to rock weddings on a daily basis. And I don't just consider them my team. They're my partners. Um, mm-hmm. Some I learn from them as much as they learn from me. And it's, uh, I I see what they do. And I'm like, oh, wow, dude, you're, you're crushing it. And mm-hmm. the only reason why they kind of 
work with me is a we have a very great relationship i have a very family type of company here you know there's no one has no there's no hierarchy of who's more important who's less important nothing like that um every dj comes with their own style right so if i have a bride and groom that come to me and i have my meetings i do all the consultations with the whole company and if a, i can see that this couple is more of an edm vibe with mix of bollywood then i'll say certain dj works best for them if I have a couple that's more my 90s hip hop, of course, mixed in with Bollywood Punjabi music, then I have a certain DJ for that. But end of the day, each DJ can do every type of crowd, everyone's open format. But I will rather put a DJ on a certain wedding where I know this couple will benefit from that DJ. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm lucky. Um, I thank God every day I got a solid crew. No questions asked. They're ready to rock. They're ready to work. They They do this not just for a living, but it's their passion. They like music. Mm-hmm. They like DJing. They like um, entertaining people. <laughs> you know, so we got a solid nine DJs, but we don't we don't take more than maybe four, three to four weddings per day. To be honest, I cap off. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like so much. I mean, you know, you guys come in, and I will say just from firsthand experience, like even if you're coming from like back to back travels, and you're like, you know there's so much going on. Like you do show up and you're just like, all right, you know, what's this event? Here's where we're at. We know what, you know exactly what's going on. You have all of Mm -hmm. your notes jotted down. So there's never like, as much as you guys are really busy, I've never experienced a situation where you're just like, oh, well, what are we doing? What's this? What's this? You guys are always on point with that stuff, which I really appreciate. You know, as far as like layering the production element, I know this is a question on everybody's mind is like the lighting because lighting is always a big question that's come up in our office a lot who does the lighting is it the dj or is it the decorator like who is the best person for this and you know i think that in our experience there's definitely some djs out there that um probably should not do lighting and then there are other djs out there that absolutely um kill it with lighting right and they do such a fantastic job like talk to us about like maybe just like a little brief like snippet about the different types of lighting, maybe different production, yeah. like where you feel like the value Absolutely. is in that. Absolutely. I mean, there's no wrong answer to go through your decorator and DJ. Now, of course, you got to see what the DJ is capable of doing. It's not plug and play, right? We're not going to plug in a light to the wall and expect it to change the room. There's a lot of programming that goes behind it. And every wedding that you get lighting, a, a significant lighting package from us, you get a lighting technician. Just like you have a DJ who's focusing on music, you got an MC who's focusing on crowd interaction. There's someone controlling the lights. His job is literally behind the scenes and he's like a ninja. <laughs> and they're just right. controlling the room. So when the MC says something in the mic, there's a stroke going off or a beat drop stroke going off. And that's just something I can just tell by saying, using my words. But pictures and videos do justice. And over the past few years, we dumped a lot of our, you know, a lot of money into our production lighting and kind of revamped everything and had such a great inventory. Lighting, you definitely want to do the LED up lighting that you need, no matter where you're getting married. You could be getting at the Breakers mm-hmm. in Palm Beach. You could be getting married at the VFW Hall down the street from your house. You got to get lighting. <laughs> you yeah, need you lighting. got to. Um, decorators do a fantastic job as well with, dec- uh, with lighting, and they know they had the same vision as DJs. And there's a lot of decorators I even had conversations with in the past where we have um, inquiries for weddings with them. And we'll say, you know what, dude? you take the you take the lighting uh for this wedding or you know what he'll he or she will tell me you know what Raj, you guys take the lighting for this one because i think it'll be they're looking for this vibe and whatnot so i'm open with with that i don't mind if a certain decorator gets it not us i'm cool with it as long as they deliver because mm-hmm. lighting and music do go hand in hand just like it goes hand in hand with decor because when i like mm-hmm. i said if there's a certain beat drop we want the room to be changing uh, versus like just a plug and play and it's like nothing no one's controlling this you know right right so i remember the old important. school lighting yeah i was gonna we say i know the old was, school lighting where they had yeah. like the little mm-hmm. disco balls or whatever with like the different colors i was at my parents house the other day we still have some stuff left in my dad's my, my parents garage and my dad's like are you ever gonna use this i'm like no he's like throw it out I'm like, no, it's like memories, like from 2001. Sentimental. I'm never going to. Yeah, it's like sentimental. Even though we're never going to use it, it's never a gig where I'm going to take that light. Even a house party for my daughter's second birthday party, I'm still not going to use it. <laughs> but I can't. It's like our CDs. We have so right. many CDs, our, our books from back in the day. 
that my brother and I, DJ Sonny, one of the original owners and main owners yes. of the company, we and him will never throw him out just because of sentiment. We'll never touch him. We're not going to throw him out. That's hilarious. I love that. So, yeah, I think that lighting for sure is really important. And I can understand from a decorator's perspective, you want to highlight and elevate the look that you've just curated. But I'm also hearing you. It's like once the dance floor opens and it's just kind of party, you, you know, music absolutely goes hand in hand with lighting. And regardless of whatever a couple's budget is, which I know can be a big contender in terms of the lighting that they decide to go with. I do agree with you that if, you know, for couples listening at the very minimum, you definitely need to get at least some up lights in your room. They, we call that stagnant lighting, um, meaning it's not going to move, right? It's just, it's one color, it's up there on the wall. Um, and then probably if you can add in some dynamic lighting, meaning moving lights or, you know, even especially for production value, I feel like speeches and first dance, especially if you're hiring a professional MC and DJ to come in, like giving them that stage and that presentation, I feel it goes a long way just in terms of Agreed. your, you know, when you are doing sangi or you are having like those formalities, you know, I think it just goes a long way for the value of mm -hmm. having those things there. Yeah, absolutely. There needs to be some texture in the room and, you know, you can go all out on decor, but still lighting kind of fills the gaps for the room. You want to make sure you have enough up lights to cover the room versus just half the room. We don't want any empty gaps. I've seen mm -hmm. it, and I'm sure you've seen it in the past when it's like not in your control. And it's like, oh, my God, you want to do something to do it, to fill up that gap, but it's not coming from me. But uh, right. once again, when we when we get a booking for LED up lighting at a wedding, we know the venues or we do our due diligence to know what we're working with so we can have a number, a good number of lights to come in there, fill up the whole room. Because mm -hmm. um, at that yeah. point, the I don't I don't want the bride and to say, oh, I booked this lighting package for me. Why doesn't it look like that? I just say, okay, give us lighting package, let us run with it, and we'll make sure it's it's up to par with the venue you have, or the room mm -hmm. you have at least to covers the space. That's that's yeah. my job. Absolutely. At that point, it's not about. I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, 29 LEDs versus 32 LEDs. I'm not sitting there charging you guys for four, three, four extra LEDs. Once again, my job is to come in make sure it looks perfect better than you imagined. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, a big testament to obviously when you guys are involved with the production, just to be clear, Raj and really any DJ, you're speaking to them about music specific when you're about like four months out and then you might like fine tune that a couple of weeks out. But if you're involved with lighting and production, obviously they're going to need to connect with you or your planner early on to know what is the space you're getting married in? What's the dimensions or capacity charts? Because I think that's, but, you know, just for couples listening, what Raj is saying is, you know, the the DJ should care enough to ask the question of like, where is this space so they can get a floor plan so they actually mm -hmm. know how many lights to bring so that there aren't like these odd like gaps and things. Because what kills me and I know when a DJ shouldn't be offering lighting services is when they don't ask us to see a floor plan. It's like, do you like, or they've never worked at that space and they don't ask to see a floor plan. Cause I'm like, okay, well, if you're providing lighting, how many, how do you know how much lighting to bring? I mean, I guess you can maybe guesstimate, but I think that's an important production part that couples should be also asking their, their DJs is if you're going to be supplying me lighting, like, are you either, if you're not able to do a site visit, are you at least going to like look at the floor plans, like have a little bit more say on that? Cause I think that's really important. Um, floor you know, plans are that. very important. Um, it it kind of just not only from a lighting aspect, but it kind of tells us and my staff and my crew that's getting to the venue very early in the day or the day before or days before to start setting up where everything goes. It will take the floor plan from you guys at the venue and add our notes to that so that so, so the crew knows where to set up the trusses, where to set up the rig, where to set, set up the stage for the DJ booth, the video wall. Versus making phone calls to you, to the decorator, to the venue staff, or to me, or to the rest of the team. Everyone just has a fluid process. Bam, I know what to do. Let's, let's make it happen. Right, right. And we really enjoy working, obviously, with vendors that bring that type of like expertise because it makes our job so much easier. Because, you know, I'm a wedding planner. I'm definitely not a lighting tech. I have enough knowledge to tell you what's going to look good and what's not going to look good and where I feel like your value is going to be. But, you know, having the professionals that can say, okay, like, you know, your event had to last minute move indoors. Here's what we're going to drop inside ceremony space. Mm -hmm. So it gives a little bit more of an intimate feel. Like having partners that are involved, invested, I think are, is just really crucial in this industry for now, sure. Now that you say the rain planner started raining, you had to move inside last minute. I've had it where ceremonies, and I'm sure you witnessed many of these down in Florida, mm -hmm. <laughs> where it's supposed to be a sunny day outside and all of a sudden rain. 
and the wedding is now indoors but now obviously you have a couple that's super upset because they wanted that outdoor ceremony but now we got to move everything indoors decor change but the good thing is lighting can obviously help enhance the room i've had it so many times where in jersey or new york where it started raining and they moved the wedding three hours before it started indoors mm-hmm. i'm not going to sit there if the bride and groom have a big lighting package for the evening i'm not going to sit there and be like all right guys fork up another five thousand dollars for lighting no i'm gonna do what i gotta do to make that bride and groom's day even better because they got bummed about the wedding being moved inside so i'll throw in up lighting or some type of stage wash to kind of brighten that room up to give them that vibe that they they wanted outdoors. And that's something I do out of this, just a social responsibility, I call it, you know, put money aside for a second. It's not about the paycheck. It's just about going out of the way or do what you got to do to make this couple's day because they trusted you Mm -hmm. to come in and be a part of the biggest day of their lives. Um, They're just like, they're not going to forget their first dance. They're not going to forget their family coming from far away. They're not going to forget the DJ because we are yeah, I want to say, kind of important that day, a little bit. <laughs> You're very important that day. We basically, <laughs> after the program gets started, I'm like, all right, you guys, like you got this. And I'm just basically texting the caterer for behind or we're ahead of schedule where we at with the food. But no, that's so important. And I'm so appreciative that you brought that up because we definitely have had rain calls here in Florida many, many times. And, you know, when you, when you have a pro that, you know, for, I love that social responsibility. It's just kind of one of those things that you just want to do right by the couple. If they've hired you to bring in and you're fully invested and you're in charge of all the lighting and production for the weekend, like it, it really should be something that you care enough to say, all right, like what can we do to make this special? And um, because I don't want to like hate on, which I will hate on slightly because it's my podcast and I can do what I want, is, <laughs> you know, the in-house professionals like you know, I don't know, inspire, encore, whatever, like, you know, Mm -hmm. for me, I feel like you pay such an absorbent amount when you work through the property to get like standardized equipment. And I feel like a lot of times, you know, their level of investment and care is just not going to be there. It's too corporate. It's too corporate. It's way too corporate. So the next thing I want to kind of dive into just the last like layer in is sort of more like the pyrotechnics and some of the effects and things like that. So are you feeling like lately, I feel like the venues have become more and more strict with these like cold sparks or like cloud effects. And so a lot of times we're having to have fun conversations with the properties about taking out like permits to have them. Like, do you run into that everywhere? Is that just like a Florida thing? I'm just curious. It's definitely more intricate in Florida, especially where I think Disney and all that being there and such these big venues. Um, it's becoming an issue in a lot of states, North Carolina. I, I don't think they even allow cold sparks. I was speaking to somebody down there saying that they got rid of all their cold sparks from their inventory because venues are just making a bigger issue about it. Um, Jersey, there's a few venues here we got to get permits for. But the good thing is we developed a relationship with the fire marshals and the cities that these permits need to be taken out for where they know when they see our name come through the Rolodex or our email come in, they're like, oh, these guys are good. Yeah, we still got to go through the protocol because you don't want to skip any lines. But they know it's us coming in. So they, they know we'd have our proper training. We have our certs. We got our fire extinguishers. Uh, but yes, it has become a bigger deal over the past few years. And I think it just took the wrong vendor who didn't handle it properly and ruined it for everybody. He did. It's totally the wrong vendor. And And I'm not, I don't know who that person is, but it's like, thanks a lot because it Mm -hmm. definitely is one of those things that couples really just don't know. And for anyone that is listening, just to give back it up a little bit, if you want to have, we call indoor pyro. So like, you know, cold sparklers. I don't know if you have any other examples of them. I don't know any other ones, the dancing on cloud effects, Mm -hmm. things like that. CO2 guns. CO2 guns, anything that could be like temperamental with their in-house fire, um, you know, proactive you know, what is called sprinklers, what have you. Basically, you have to go through the county to confirm that that's number one permitted. You then have to make sure that your drapes that your decorators bringing in are fire retardant and you have to have certification showing that they're fire retardant. So like what I'm getting at is if you want to have these types of elements, make sure to like throw that out to your DJ early on. Just say like, hey, we really want to blow it out of the water because then that gives you know, but both us and the DJ enough time to make sure that we get all of our ducks in an order that we can like mm-hmm. deliver it for you. Because 
trying to add it in last minute. It seems like it's basic. Trust me, we wish it was basic, but yeah. it's become a thing. We've had our, uh, with you guys and us, we've had our issues getting permits. We make it happen. We made it happen, but it was, yes, it does get nail biting towards the end where it's like, are we going to get the permit? Is the town going to come in and maybe say yes, 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 and last minute just be like, no, peace out. We're not doing it. Because it's up yeah. to the fire marshal at that point. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of yeah. moving parts where I feel like a lot of bride and grooms don't understand that it's not, we're not coming in this day off to work or cover your wedding. We're doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes your name or your your date or your event has been pa- tossed around, name has been tossed around at the office so many times just to make sure everything is going as planned. Um, for example, one thing is getting permits for a wedding. People don't realize the hours it takes to get those permits. It's it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. And and I love it. I don't mind it. It's part of the job. But a lot of writing is like think that, okay, the DJ or the production company is getting paid X, Y, Z for this day. Of, no, you're paying us from the minute you hired us all the way down to the last minute of your wedding or even until we load out. <laughs> yeah, so, 100%. Yeah, and once again, I always say this, the show must go on. Uh, it is mm-hmm. what it is. But uh, something we learned to accept and we're happy to work to get those permits. And like I said, I know the venues, at least in Jersey and New York and like the tri-state Philly area where they need permits. Florida, I already kind of figured it out. Um, uh, California, we had an issue where we had a few weddings where they needed permits and we got it, made it happen. It's a lot crazier out there <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> versus the Florida. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy out there. So, but once again, we make it happen. We learn yeah. and we learn of something new every day. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You I learn about everything. like different venues and, and restrictions mm-hmm. and things like that. You know, curious because we run into this when we do like destination weddings, obviously you're no stranger to going to like exotic locations like Mexico and, you know, even in Europe and things like that. What do you do to source equipment? Because I'm curious, you know, obviously you're not going to like lug all that stuff with you on no. the airplane. Um, and then finding a partner that's obviously going to give the quality you're looking for. Is that something that, you know, you usually like send your equipment rider and like planner and couple sort of like vet that for you? Do you like just have existing relationships? Like how does that usually work out? So anything in the U.S., we have like partners in every major city. Um, anything in the East Coast, we kind of cover, as you kind of saw, even last month mm-hmm. we had a wedding together where we drove down our truck. My staff drove it down. We like to use everything in-house. So Boston down to Florida, we'll travel ourselves. Anything west of that, Texas, Houston, um, Los Angeles, even cities like Denver, Colorado, we have partners in those cities where they have the same gear that we own back at home. So when we have a wedding, like a full all-day Indian wedding, they know already, okay, Raj, you guys need the Barat, the Barat truck, the ceremony with the lavalier mic for the priest, the lighting uh, for the ceremony if it's indoors, the reception, sound, fireworks, the whole nine yards. So we have these partnerships that we established over the past more than 10 years. So they're vetted. We know that we can trust them, and that's the biggest thing, trust. Prices out, like I said, shoot pricing out the window. Who cares about that? My thing is trust. Um, if you can deliver or not, and I'll give you whatever you want in terms of money. Just once again, you got to deliver because if my bride and groom is flying us out from New York City to DJ a wedding in Denver, Colorado, I got to make sure everything is better than perfect or mm-hmm. else they could have gone with someone local. They could have easily found yeah. someone in Denver to do their wedding, but they're flying us out. So we have partners in every major city. Um, down in Cancun, Punta Cana, Cabo, Spain, I have a wedding there next month. We obviously got to find vendors out there. Luckily, these resorts and these hotels have come a long way. And I think Cancun knows Indian weddings better than <laughs> uh, Mexican weddings, where yeah. they know exactly, okay, the barat, the ceremony, the reception, they know exactly what the DJs want. And our writers are pretty similar because mm-hmm. for that, we're just worrying about sound. Uh, we're just worrying mm-hmm. about the from the sound production. Lighting-wise, mm-hmm. we let the decor kind of take over over there because they know the venues better than we do. Right. Right. Yeah. But so I love again, that because obviously there's like a lot of humility in that and saying, hey, you know, here's where we're really going to shine and like the max amount of our expertise and what we can carry forward is going to work out. And then here's where I feel like let's work with this local professional. And there's a lot to be said about that, Raj, because, you know, ultimately it is really important that when vendors are vetting their DJs, entertainment professionals, you need to have someone that has also the humility to say, hey, like, 
it would be better for you to actually do this as opposed to get this particular item from me. And I feel like you've always been very transparent with that. Like, hey, we're going to be able to do this and show up and just make it happen 100% or, hey, here's an element that might be best to source. And I always think mm -hmm. like looking out for your couple is always been a priority, obviously, for you. And I think that's important for couples to hear because not saying that there's like DJs out there that are looking to get out for you, but you know, don't ever work with someone that kind of is biting off more than they can chew. You want to make sure that everything's kind Agreed. of in alignment with, with what's going to be Agreed. the best product. Right. Agreed. I mean, I've been in situations where, you know, I'll book something and I'll be like, why did I book myself for that? Or why did I book a company for that? Cause I know that was something a little bit more, but we make it happen. But now I know in the future, like if I have a wedding down in Atlanta, where they got the full truck coming down from us for the sound, the lighting, the visuals, the dance floor wraps, but they want a photo booth. Something such a, it's such a big part of the wedding, don't get me wrong, we offer that. But I tell my couples, you know what, you might be better off getting that from a local vendor in Atlanta than mm -hmm. us packing a photo booth in our truck and having to worry about that small element for us. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm open to that. It's not always about money. It's not. Yeah. It's all about, like yeah. you said, making sure we can um, handle all the eggs in our basket. Yeah, totally makes sense. Um, I think that just as far as like a couple other things, you know, is there any tips that you would give to couples in terms of like effectively communicating with their DJs? Like, for example, when they are submitting songs, is it just like a long list on an email or do you guys have like a platform that they upload that to or is there like a Google form? Like, what are some of the most effective ways that they can like just kind of share insight and info? So, I mean, in terms of providing a favorite song list, they can even share Spotify list. We come in such a digital age of music nowadays, everything is a click of a button. So for bride and groom, I've had so many couples where they have a Spotify list from the day they got engaged all the way down to their wedding, and they just share the link with us. And okay. like I said, half the songs on their Spotify list are probably already in the back of our minds or stuff that we want to play anyways. But um, that's the best way i found to share your favorite music because there's a lot of remixes on um, um, Spotify nowadays. Regular, obviously, original songs, even like 60s music that the parents may want to hear, like 60s, 70s Bollywood music that you probably won't even find anymore, but it's on Spotify. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of providing like your first dance, your cake cutting song, your parent dances, and anything else that's like a specific song for that moment, believe it or not, I tell my couples to provide us the YouTube links, mm -hmm. but embedded into the wedding planner schedule. So we're looking at one doc. That means mm -hmm. the photographer knows what slow dance it is. I know what slow dance it is. The hair and makeup artist knows what slow dance it is versus right. me or our DJ shuffling through the wedding planner's schedule and our documents. It's just too, mm. much, too many moving parts. And I feel, and I'm sure you will love hearing this, we find the wedding planner's document like a manual to the wedding day. So we're going to be looking at that like it's our, it is our job. We're going to be looking at that. Okay, bam, first dance song, YouTube link, bam, it's there. The bride and groom provided us exactly the correct song because he could tell us or he could tell us, hey, I want to walk out to or I want my slow dance song to be John Legend or something. But the version I have is different than the version they've been practicing to. So I just say, give us a YouTube link. We're going to rip it off of YouTube. Don't worry, we're not going to play it off of YouTube because the ads, and everyone asks me, right. are going to have ads? Right. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to play it off of there. Uh, yeah, we just, just want an exact <laughs> version so we yeah. can make sure it's exactly what you've been imagining your slow dance to be, your bridal party entrance, your entrance when you're walking down the aisle versus me playing the wrong song, which is the biggest nightmare a DJ can have. There's two nightmares DJs have. Showing up late, no, three nightmares. Showing up late, equipment malfunction, and playing the wrong song. And they can all be avoided. They're all avoidable. Show up on time. Um, and on time is too late, so show up before on time. <laughs> um, carry backup, backup equipment, backup laptops, backup speakers, backup microphones. Um, you never know when you're in a situation, and I've been in those, and we've learned, and once again, we carry backup, and God forbid you have to use it. And of course, third is the songs. Just we ask the bride and grooms to be specific, give us as much detail as possible. If you, I have some bride and grooms I'm so lucky to have where they provide us the MP3s. They mm -hmm. go out of their way, download the MP3s, and put it on a Google Drive and give it to us, and they label it first dance.mp3, parent uh, mother son dance.mp3. And I'm like, you guys are awesome. I wish all Oh, wow, they go like, down as favorites. 
<laughs> yeah, I I had them all marked down. They're they're getting reviews from me to them. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. No, it's so important. I mean, obviously, you know, even for planners, I think it's important to make sure that your vendors are showing up and they're able to be successful too. Like making sure you're asking the right questions, like how much power are they going to need? Do they need an mm -hmm. umbrella outside? Because in sunny Florida, your equipment is going to maybe overheat because it's like a hundred degrees outside or what have you. And so those things are really important, I think, for couples to make sure that they're also working with a planner that's asking yeah. the DJs the right questions to make sure that they can show up and operate at their best. Because, you know, especially if it's a venue that they've not worked at before, they may not know, oh, hey, the Barat path is too narrow for us to bring a truck in. We're going to have to get a mm -hmm. golf cart or we got to talk about this. So those are all things I think that are really important to talk about. But um, Raj, I could literally talk to you forever about production stuff, but <laughs> in, in wrapping this up, um, I guess one of the things that I want to ask you just for couples that are listening, what's like the best way for people to kind of keep up with you and your crew? Um, what are some of like your social, obviously we'll post that in our uh, link, but is there anything in particular if couples can be following you? Do you guys keep your Instagram up to date? Things to that we end. try our best. We try our best to keep our Instagram up to date, but as you can imagine, this sometimes being a mix of the season, we get, forget to post up some cool stuff that's happened at these weddings. But definitely, Instagram is the best way at Platinum Road Show or myself, DJ Raj Manocha. And if you go to Platinum Road Show, you'll see all the DJs, and you'll see the specific posts. And nowadays, you can even see the DJs are able to in, um, embed with Platinum Road Show, so you can kind of go to their pages too to see what they're up to, whether it's a wedding. Um, club events that they do off season. So once again, Instagram, SoundCloud, we try to update, but we don't get to it. But yeah, yeah, Instagram. totally. That's awesome. Or That's just, awesome to, to be honest, just pick up your phone and call me. I like to talk. <laughs> yeah, you do. You're good with your phone. <laughs> I'm You're a talker. I'm a good talker. You call me, I'm in the car. I'll be like, yeah, yeah, let's let's rock your wedding. I'll make I'll make it happen. <laughs> So I guess what we always end every podcast with a parting word saying you don't know what you don't know. Is there any like parting advice or just like anything that you would just tell couples in general who are planning their events, things to think about? I would say don't rush. Uh, make a wise choice. Don't believe everything you're told. Do your research. Go with your gut. Go with the connection you have with the vendor. Not just DJs, any vendor, whether it's a photographer, makeup artist, um, wedding planner. Go with your gut, see the chemistry you have because you're essentially hiring a best friend who may be your best friend after the wedding too for for the next eight to 10 months. So you wanna go with your gut, throw money out, the, uh, forget about the price, price will be fixed if you like the service. If someone likes what they see, I will go out of my way to make sure, okay, we can work in your budget. But once again, what I would leave this with, go stick with your gut, go with what you think is right, but do not rush. Because mm -hmm. this is something that something very really important. It's not like okay, you can buy something from the store today and return it tomorrow. You can't. Um, you can, but that's just another can of worms. You don't want to, want to deal with. It. Right. Right. So I, hope I think at the a, end of the day, that's really helpful because you're right. It's 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 a one time, one option to get it right. We don't have dress rehearsals and events. And we have production run-throughs, but we don't have yeah. dress rehearsals. You got to get it right say, the first time. I, I say a wedding is like a Broadway show without rehearsal. We have Us vendors do this on a daily, so we know what to expect. But to be honest, for a bride and groom, we forget that this is their one time they're doing this. So we're like, wait, why didn't they know this? Because they're a bride and groom. They didn't do this before. Right. Right. So once again, it's a dress rehearsal, but the good thing is you have vendors that have expertise in their field to make sure everything goes as planned. Yeah, no, I so appreciate your words of wisdom, honestly, Raj, because this is kind <laughs> of why I even started this podcast was purely just to have an outlet for couples who were planning to just see that there are industry pros that do really have a lot of heart in what they do. And, and I think that's really speaks volumes for people who want to hire the right pros and want to make sure that they're making the right decisions and just helping them to make more informed and educated choices, you know? So thank you so much for your time. I really, really oh, appreciate it. That was an honor. Thank you for having me. Awesome. All right, everyone.